Hello and welcome to episode one of the Emily Knits podcast. As you might be able to guess from the imaginative channel name, I am Emily. I am a knitter and sometimes crocheter from North Nottinghamshire in the UK. I wanted to create a bit of a space on the internet where I could share my hobby, share my works in progress, uh, hopefully build a bit of a community as well. I really like the social aspect of knitting as a hobby and I'd love to meet more people through this. So that's one of my hopes for this. I came into 2024 with a couple of goals for my knitting, like I'm sure a lot of us did. Uh, I have, as you might be able to see behind me, quite a large whip pile. I am very much not a monogamous knitter. I get very bored very quickly if I'm just working on one project. I always have multiple whips on the go and I um, very much follow the shiny and the dopamine, which does quite often mean, unfortunately, that I cannot resist casting on something new and I end up with lots of unfinished things. Coming into 2024, I have 11 whips on my needles, which for some might seem a lot, for me is actually quite low. At one point last year, I think about October 2023, I was actually at 20 uh, whips, works in progress. They weren't all active whips, but there was 20 things that I wanted to finish that hadn't been finished yet. Um, that is a lot. <laughs> And whilst I have cut that down a bit, I didn't help myself massively because I then ended up, I, I really love test knitting and I ended up signing up for three more test knits, uh, doing some gift knitting. So whilst I have cleared that number down a bit, I still have 11 and I've completed more stuff in the middle of that as well. This year, I would really like to finish some of the stuff that I've got on my needles. I have a lot of stuff that's been on there for a very long time, albeit I have finished a couple of my most long-standing whips last year. Um, but I would like to work on the things that I've already started. All of these things, um, I've already gone through my whip list and got rid of a lot of things that I didn't think I would wear, that maybe I'd cast on in a bit of a, in a bit of haste, and I didn't realise that actually I probably wouldn't wear in the long run, uh, or I didn't want to finish, or there was something about the project that I wasn't enjoying. So they're all gone, which is part of how it's gone down to 11 from 20. But the things that are left are all all things that I've chosen because I like and um, because I want to wear and I think will look good on me and I think will look good in my wardrobe. So I would really, really like to finish those. Um, another thing that I came into this year with an aim of is knitting through my stash a bit. Now, I will say up front, I know stash size is really, really subjective. I have what I consider a fairly large stash. To some people that might not be large, to others it might be large. It's it's very personal. Um, I do think my stash would be considered large to most people. <laughs> and I'm not particularly upset about the size of my stash. What I am wanting to do is work from the stuff that I've got in there. I've got sweater quantities that I've purchased with a pattern in mind that I want to use. I've got special skeins that I've bought that I want to use that I want to get out there. So yeah, I would really like to just be a bit more mindful about that this year and they link together because part of the reason I haven't been able to knit from my stash so much is because I've got so many things on the needles I don't really feel like I can cast on something new justifiedly when I've got 11 things that I want to knit that I should really get off the needles first so all that being said that's going to be my aim for this podcast particularly to begin with is to give myself a bit of accountability to try and get some things finished and that's what this first episode is going to be, is a bit of a whip parade. Talk you through everything I'm working on at the moment. I'll try and keep it brief. Uh, and then the second video that I want to try and put up fairly quickly is a organise my stash with me. Now, I'll be entirely honest up front that my stash is currently a bit of a state. And that's half of the problem is that I can't see what's in there because there's too much in there. And if I can't see it, I can't use it. I can't be inspired by it. I can't knit from it. So... I want to organise it, I want to catalogue it all on Ravelry and I want to do that as part of, and I want to do a video on that as well, showing that and the process of doing that because I love watching those kind of videos so why wouldn't I want to make one? So that is going to be the second video that I'll put up hopefully fairly quickly. I will then, and my aim is to move this into more of a traditional podcast format, talking through hopefully finished objects because there's plenty to go at. Um, new cast-ons, acquisitions, there won't be many of those, but I should say I'm not imposing any yarn bands or any cast-on bands on myself. At the end of the day, this is my hobby and I love my hobby. 
and I don't want to take the joy of that away by limiting myself or putting restrictions on that but I am going to just try and be a bit more mindful about cast-ons and yarn purchases um and then yeah that that'll be the way that this moves forward into a bit more of a podcast format maybe with some particular vlogs finishing certain items and things like that so I hope that sounds like something that might be of interest um with without further ado I will get into the projects because I think we might be here a little while I will try not to go into too much detail um because with 11 projects we could be here for a very long video and I appreciate you know you're choosing to spend your time with me when there is a lot of other content like this on the internet um so I don't want to drag it out too much but let's get started so the first thing is on the top of the pile uh and is the one that I'm hoping to finish the soonest. So this is actually a, a Christmas gift and I can hear the questioning thoughts already saying Emily today is the 4th of January when I'm filming this when I put it up it's probably going to be the 5th or 6th Christmas is gone what happened? So this is let me show it first this is massive all the way up to there this was a Christmas gift is a Christmas gift for my other half um, my other half is incredibly knitworthy. He uh, really, really does enjoy the things that I make for him. Sorry, I should say I have a dog and everything is full of his fur. Um, yeah, my other half is incredibly knitworthy, but he doesn't often request things from me. I have made him things like socks in the past. I've made him hats. I've made him some gloves that he absolutely loves and some mittens. Um, I've made him a couple of jumpers, but I haven't quite hit right on the jumpers. They've just not been really things that... They've been things that I've made that I thought he will like, and that's not necessarily the things that he wants. So I haven't quite hit right with them. Um, and on about the 20th of November, late November, we were talking about Christmas presents and upcoming Christmas and everything, and we were having a discussion about what we might want as presents from each other. And he said... Um, that the thing that he always likes the most from me, the gifts that he always likes the most from me, are things that I've made him on the 20th of November. And I was thinking I could maybe, I could maybe catch, get a pair of socks out in that, but I, my sock mojo has been terrible this year. I've finished, I think, maybe three pairs of socks. That's it. So that would be a challenge, but I could probably do that. I would have a go for a Christmas gift. But we had a discussion about what he would like, and he said what he'd really like was a cardigan. Um... I should say at this point, my other half is six foot four and he's quite broad shouldered. He's not a small man, so it is not a quick process to knit him a cardigan. He also, when we talk through patterns and what he liked and things like that, he wanted long. He doesn't want a waist length cardigan. He wants something that covers his hips and he really likes colour work. He likes that sort of traditional style colour work pattern and he wanted shawl collar. He'd got a cardigan that's got a shawl collar. He really likes that, so he'd like a really deep shawl collar. And he liked buttons on the front as well. And I pretty much instantly chose a pattern and I pretty much instantly ordered the yarn. The yarn arrived on the 22nd of November. I cast on on the 22nd of November. I was already up against it. I was already up against it. But we were away for Christmas. We weren't in our home. We were in, in the country, but we were away and I didn't want to work on this in front of him. So I knew I needed to finish this or I could do as much as I could up until the point at which we went away, at which point I couldn't work on it anymore because there was no way where we were going. He was going to not see me working on it. And he does pay attention. He does. He is interested in my hobby and the things that I make uh, and he probably would have asked about it. So I picked the Selbu coat by Skane Deer, which again I'll show really quickly. It is beautiful. This was a pattern I'd wanted to knit for a while, um, just hadn't got round to it. And when he said that he wanted an all over, or he wanted a, a traditional style colour work pattern, this was perfect. It's also knit on like five mil needles. I think the suggested is 5.5, .5, but I got gauge on five mil. And it is a fairly quick pattern to knit up, although it is, like I said, it is really, really long, really long. It's knit from the top down in one piece and then you steek this was also my first time steeking my first steek is really really messy the other two i did the sewn reinforcement the first one i did the crochet reinforcement didn't like that very much at all um i don't know if i can show you every time i pick the neat one this will be the messy one yeah the, the, the steak's coming off in places the reinforcement's coming off it seems fine He's tried it on a few times, there's no gaps, there's no areas where I think it's going to pull away, but I was nervous at the time, I was very distraught. Um, 
so yeah I did everything I could to finish this in time but I didn't quite get there uh, this is knit in Peruvian Highland wool by Phil Kalana which this is the first time I've used this and I'm wondering why <laughs> because I have loved it I have absolutely adored working with this it is soft it's squishy it's buttery smooth and it's really quite cost effective as well I should mention that just due to the fact that my other half is, is like I say six foot four tall um, I'm also tall I'm six foot tall and I'm a plus size knitter so knitting for either of us does quite often include uh, quite a lot of yarn takes quite a lot of yarn to make things for us so I don't tend to buy <laughs> I tend to be quite frugal with my yarn choices when I say frugal I don't it's not particularly budget and I don't particularly restrict myself but I can't bring myself really to spend three figures on a project so I try and choose the most cost effective thing that I possibly can there are some patterns before that I've costed up for myself um, a petite knit one for example like I can't remember what pattern it was but I costed it up for myself using the recommended yarn and it was three strands of, of something or three different strands held together and to make the size that I needed for the recommended ease would have cost me almost £300 and I just I can't do that so I will usually substitute yarns and find something that's more cost effective. Phil Kalana has been great for that and um, this worked really really well with this pattern so I can recommend if you're looking for a UK yarn that you can, or yarn that you can get in the UK that works for this pattern um, it's gorgeous. These are the shades, uh, oatmeal is the beige in the background and then nougat is the darker colour that's also on the collar and cuffs. This I would have said should have been the first thing that I was going to finish and I still think it will be fairly fairly straightforward but I have just done the buttonholes, I should say the pattern doesn't come with buttonholes, I had to add that as a mod because he wanted buttons um, but I got him to try it on last night and I think I need a bit more depth before the buttonholes so I'm going to have to rip those back and re -knit a bit further. But that's all I've got left to do is the collar and the buttonholes. If I show the back, you can see the full extent of the pattern. And it is, it is really, really gorgeous. So yeah, that is absolutely a priority to get finished. He does also keep jokingly asking where his cardigan is. So the sooner I do that, the sooner I stop the jokes. So moving on to the next priority project, the thing that needs to be completed in the shortest time, uh, and that is a test knit for Celine Phaeton, who is Celine Knits on Instagram. This is my second time test knitting for Celine. Um, I test knit the Gofret Raglan for her earlier in the year, and I adore that. I wear that a lot. Um, I really, really wear that a lot. I knit that out of Drops Charisma. This is the Little Crystals pullover. And again, I just, the moment she put this on Instagram and teased it as an upcoming design, I knew I wanted to test it. And if I couldn't test it, I was going to make it anyway. So this isn't currently on needles on the body at the moment. Let's see where it ends. Um, I have put it on hold while I do the neck. This is going to be a folded collar. So I think I've got about half an inch to do more, something like that, before I fold it, stitch it down. And then I'm going to go back to the body. Once I've tried it on and figured out how much length I've got, now, this test knit is due in less than a week. It was due a week yesterday. I am not concerned. This is so enjoyable to knit on. It's an all-over colour work pattern. The sleeves have colour work as well on them. Um, but it's so much fun to knit. And I know once I've got a bit of dedicated knitting time on this with a deadline that I have to work to, it will fly. So this won't take long to get done. This is knit in Cascade 220, which is the recommended yarn for the pattern. This, again, is another one I've tried for the first time this year. And absolutely loved this is the second time i've worked with it i made a, a cirrus sweater by iris makes uh, by iris of iris makes earlier in the year in that plus a strand of mohair and that's gorgeous i've got another test knit coming up which the yarn is up here for that i'll show you in a second that's using that uh, it's again i know it's it's a peruvian highland wool again the same as phil Kalana, peruvian highland wool so it turns out i have a, a type but this is in the shade natural which is the cream and Shire, which is the dark foresty green. And it's absolutely gorgeous. I can't wait to have this finished and wear it. I put this on for the first time yesterday after taking it off the needles to pick up for the collar. It's such a good fit. It's such a good fit. Celine's patterns, if you've, if you've ever knit one before, you will already know. And if you haven't, let me tell you, <laughs> they are some of the most detailed patterns you will ever come across. They are some of the longest documents you'll ever come across as well, but that's entirely a good thing. Because if there is a modification that you can think of for it it will have been done 
um, or it will be in there as an option. Everything is really well explained, really well described. There are options for bus starts, there's options for waist shaping, there's options for adding length and how and where to add length if you want to. There's really, you know, really interesting shaping around the neckline and things like that. It isn't just knit straight and even around the back, it isn't just knit straight. She's she's very, very considered in her construction, in her, in her inclusivity, which I think is fantastic. So yeah, really can't wait to wear this. Super excited. I think I'll get so much wear out of this with either black jeans or blue jeans. It's just, yeah, just gorgeous. So that's the Little Crystals by Celine. They are the main two like urgent deadlines. I should mention there is another one now. I from time to time I sample knit. It's a similar thing for me to test knitting. I like a deadline. I like a purpose. I enjoy doing that. So I do from time to time sample knit, and I am working on a sample knit at the moment. The brand that I am knitting for have asked me not to share that, so I'm not going to. Um, but I wanted to mention it because it is taking up quite a lot of my knitting time at the moment. It is a worked flat. Um, all over textured cabled sweater uh, work flat seam together I've done two and a half of the pieces so I need to finish that piece and do one more and then seam it all but that is yeah that's the deadline for that is coming up so I'm, I'm working quite hard on that and it is taking a lot of time so I wanted to mention that at the moment I mentioned as well that there is a test knit coming up that I'm going to be casting on quite shortly probably once I finish my little crystals I will cast this on and this is called the Irene Sweater by Rebecca, who is Journey Through Yarn on Instagram. I haven't cast this on yet, so I can't show you it. But it is, I'll put in a picture somewhere here probably. It is an all over, again, all over textured um, drop shoulder sweater, but it's not a very detailed texture. Uh, it's again, it's knitting Cascade 220. And I have my yarn, I have the shade Pumpkin Spice. Now I hold it up here. It's very similar to this. I should have said what I'm wearing. This is the Lapidarium by Marina Skewer in her Mendip DK yarns. These are all on the cloudy base. We've got Fox is the orangey colour, Beach is the main colour, Bloom is the green and Sheep is the grey. Uh, this is one of my most worn patterns. Marina has a knit along, make along at the moment. If you use any of her yarns, any of her fibres, any of her patterns, you can enter it. It's the Out of the Dark make along 2023 no 2024 I did that when I posted about it on Instagram I'll put the details below if you want to join that but I can really highly recommend this pattern it was a joy to knit it fits beautifully and her yarns are gorgeous as well so if you wanted to knit something else but in her yarns I would highly recommend them all that to say sorry yeah this is a really similar color and I didn't realize until I held it up but this is pumpkin spice by cascade uh, the cascade 220 and this is what I'll be knitting my Irene sweater in I'm not concerned about getting that done in time. I've got until March and having seen some of the other testers working on it, it's kind of flown off their needles. So I think I'll be fine. So there are all my priority knits that have a deadline that I need to work on first. Uh, the rest is all stuff that I maybe haven't got a deadline for, but I do want to finish and I do want to work on and I would like to get done this year. So let's go through those. We'll go through this one first because I'm dreading this because this is massive. This was this is a nightmare to show. So this is a half and half stripes wrap by Pearl Soho. Or I should say it's loosely inspired by the half and half stripes by Pearl Soho because it's not following the stripe pattern. I have to admit, I did not get the hype about the half and half at all to begin with. I just I just didn't get it. And I didn't really get the stripes either until I saw Cat Weaver do her version where she used dice to add a bit of chaos into a knitting, dice directed knitting. Uh, what she did was she did one side in entirely one cover colour and then she used dice to direct the second side and that's sort of what I've done, although I've done different colours on one side. So let me show this. It's massive, it's really hard to show. And then that's the second side. So this is the first side. We've got some Plotalopi at the top up here. This is Rao work, DK, no, sport. Uh, this is, just throw it over my shoulder, <laughs> glamorous, this is some Woolrush Glenesk, Glenesk fibres Woolrush, I'll put all the names and everything below, particularly for this one, the colourways and things, there's so many yarns in it, if I show this side, there's so many different colours and yarns and things in it that I can't remember them all off the top of my head, so I'll have to put them down below, um, but yeah, this is all, all fairly special skeins. So on this side, I've got 
uh, a background of Uppingham yarns in the colour Pebble. That isn't going to show, I don't think. There's just a really, it's a really neutral grey. It shows a bit better in there. Really neutral grey brown colour. Um, and I love it because it lets everything else pop and that was the point. And then I've used some special skeins. So the wool rush at the bottom on this side, I got at the same time as this, which hopefully will show Yeah, It's a hand painted yarn from Abercairn Yarns. And I got them both from Kathy's Knits when we were on holiday up in Edinburgh earlier in the year. Uh, this is some leftovers from a jumper I made for Christian before. This is some drops, drops at Baby Merino. This is some John Arban, first time I'd ever tried that. I think it's the shade Black Gold of the Sun. It's the Yarnadelic colourway, colourway. The Yarnadelic range and the colourway is Black Gold of the Sun. This is from a little shop in Bamberg in Germany when we went on holiday there. I think it's pronounced Voledler. Apologies to anybody who speaks German. This was their own hand dyed and it's a really rich purple colour which isn't going to show up very well at all. Uh, and then this is some leftovers from some socks I knit for my dad. And the Plotilope is in here as well. So there's a real mix and most of them mean something. The row work even means something because my other half got me it for my birthday this last year. So they all mean something special. I've made a couple of mods to it. Obviously I've made a mod to this the way you do this side. What I've done basically is I roll two six-sided dice. I do it on a website on my phone because I cannot be trusted to carry things like that around with me. I'll lose them. So I do it on my phone and each of the yarns has a number from one to six assigned to it. So the first dice gives me the number of rows and the second dice gives me the colour. And I do a row of, uh, a stripe basically of each of those with a row of upping in between. Um, the other mods I've done are, the pattern suggests wrap and turns. I've used German short rows, so I just prefer them. And the other mod I would do if I would do it again, which I think I would do again, honestly, because I think it's a really nice way to use up special skeins and things. And I think I'll get a lot of use out of this. Um, what Kat did is to make it easier for her. What you do basically is you start off with your long side at the bottom. I think everybody knows this now, but just in case. You cast on all of your stitches, which are, it's, it's a lot. It's a free pattern, so I don't mind. I'm not giving anything away, but I think it's like 280 odd stitches. And then you work down and essentially you're decreasing. So you're getting smaller all the way up until the top where you're only working a couple of stitches. And then you knit down and you start again and you cast on at the same end as you started initially, which is why all of these are here. And you only cast on again a couple of stitches and then you start increasing all the way up. Now what Kat did was she did all the first side, knit down, knit back up and cast on all of her stitches again and then decreased. And I think I would do that because just in terms of the momentum of the project, these, these rows are starting to take ages now when I knit them. Um, so... If I'd done it the other way, they would be getting shorter and shorter now. But yeah, that is, I can't wait to have this finished again. I'll get a lot of wear out of this. This will go around my shoulders at work. It'll go on my lap. It will stay probably in the seating area here as a blanket. It will probably be claimed by the dog as a dog blanket, but oh, I can live with that. Uh, and yeah, this will absolutely be, this just got stopped because I had test nits and deadlines, but I really would like to work on this and finish it. Okay. What next? This is the next one I wanted to talk about. This currently isn't on needles or anything. This was a test knit and this was a test knit where you just needed to complete the yoke on one sleeve. Excuse the ends, because it's not finished. I haven't weaved ends in and things yet. This is the Winona Polo by M Knits, Emily Chen, uh, who is, I think, a relatively new designer. I think this is about her fourth design um, and I really, really think, you know, I really highly recommend you should go and check her out. She is a fantastic designer. This is one of the most polished things I think I've ever made. Um, so it's a, a rugby style polo. This is the suggested, there's two suggested stripe patterns in the, pro, in the stripe patterns in the pattern. This is one of them, obviously. The other one is sort of mainly all in one colour with some stripes across the bust that I wanted to go for the slightly more random stripes. If I show you the back, the striping's different on the back as well. Uh, this is knit entirely from stash. So I really, really, I really want to complete this. I think this is absolutely gorgeous. I would like to, I've tried this on obviously because of where it's at and it, it's really flattering on me. It's quite oversized, but it suits me really well. 
Uh, and as Rebecca the Grey Bear says, I feel like cool girl when I have this on. And that's that's the aim really, isn't it, for your knitting, to feel cool. Uh, or to feel like you, maybe. So yeah, I really, really want to work on this. Again, I had other test knits. That's the only reason why I didn't finish it when I did. But this will be on there very, very soon, back on the needles. And I really think you should check Emily out. I should say before I go into colourways, you have a double knit button band. Sorry, double knit plackets at the front. And double knit collar. Double knit intarsia collar, first time I did intarsia. And also double knit cuffs as well at the end which really do give it a very polished feel. So yeah, this is knit entirely from Stash. So the orange is a woolly knit British wool cone, four ply cone in the shade Burnt Orange, which I'd had in Stash for ages and I didn't know what to do with. The cream is Cascade Heritage Fingering in the shade Limestone, again, had it in Stash for a while. And then the blue, which you can see better there, the blue and the brown are both the same color, uh, same type of yarn. They're both Signet Truly Wool Rich 4-ply, which were leftovers from dog hair. You can actually see the dog hair on it, look. Um, leftovers from my first ever project that I knitted, my first ever sweater, sorry, that I knitted. Um, and I don't know if you can get these anymore. They were stocked and I think created by Dara Moss, which obviously went under a couple of years ago, but I do really rate this yarn. I think it's really nice. Moving on, we'll go on to a crochet project. I did mention at the beginning that I actually started crocheting. Oh, I think I mentioned at the beginning that I did. I meant to. Like a lot of people, I started knitting, crochet and everything during the pandemic. And I tried knitting first off and it just didn't really stick. I couldn't, I got so frustrated with it. Um, so I picked up crochet instead. And I actually used to have an Etsy shop where I would sell things that I'd crocheted. And that led to me burning out <laughs> on crochet and moving into knitting and stayed with that for a while. But I have started um, over the last year really getting back into crochet again. And this was something that caught my eye and I really, really wanted to knit. So this is, uh, looks weird at the moment, but what it's going to be in the end, if I put this on, it's going to look really strange over my jumper. But this is going to be the Calad shirt by Jess Roots Knots on Instagram. If I sort of... Yeah, you can you can see the texture. Um, you basically knit the two flat panels, join in the middle. It has a collar that comes around here. It's sort of like a bowling shirt kind of thing. Um, this is knit in Stylecraft Naturals, which is a 60% bamboo, 40% cotton blend, so very much summy yarns. This is in the shade Spring Green. This is in the shade Chalk. Uh, the only reason this stopped was because I ran out of the yarn. I think it's the chalk I've run out of, and I'm going to need some more of the Spring Green anyway. So I just needed to get some more... Uh, this, I think, will look really nice with jeans over a little camisole in summer. So this is something that it was fairly time consuming um, because I don't know if you can see. I'm going to take this off so I can show it a bit better. It's quite, you know, it's quite intense crochet um, and it's on like a three millimetre hook. So it's quite small. But yeah, I think this will be absolutely gorgeous in the summer. I think I'll get a lot of wear of it. I'd like to finish this before summer, ideally, so that I can get some wear out of it. Moving on to another not quite finished test knit. So this was a test knit for Lauren of Work Knits. She has a fantastic podcast and some gorgeous designs that I would highly recommend you check out if you like the look of this. Don't take this as it is. <laughs> this looks like a little ratty little God knows what, but this is because I haven't finished. So this is going to be the From Farm to City shawl. I helped test knit this for Lauren. Um, she was struggling with some of the numbers at the pickup, so that's why it's not completed because what she really needed assistance with was the pickup numbers. After that, she was able to release it so I could finish it at my own pace. But this is a, it is a triangular shawl. You can't really see that because of the edges curling. And it's got this cable detail down the middle. And what I need to do, all I need to do is I need to do an apply die cord edge onto the edge of this and block it to stop it wrapping in on itself because it shouldn't be that thin. And I'll put a picture up here somewhere of what it should look like because it is gorgeous and the colours that Lauren used on her sample are gorgeous as well. They're both John Arban yarns, I think. I've used some drops. I can't remember what drops it is. It's a DK weight drops and I'm pretty certain it is an alpaca wool blend. I'll put it down below. You don't need much at all for this little middle wing. And then the other bits that I've used, the wings, is a hand dyed yarn from Floof Fibres on Etsy. I have all here so you can see the colours a bit better and it's called I think it's Mariam or Mariam or Marjam M-A-R-J-A-M I think it's Mariam uh, I'd got two skeins of this this is DK weight 
superwash merino hand dyed. I got two skeins of this to make a shawl for my mum, a pressed flowers shawl, and I just wasn't enjoying that when I was knitting it. So I ripped it all out and then I used it for this. And I'm going to have quite a lot left after I finish this because say all I need to do is the applied eye cord. And I think I'll get a lot of wear out of this. I've discovered I used to work completely remotely. I now work one day a week from the office and I've discovered that having a little shawl that looks so bad with these colours. Having a little shawl to throw around my shoulders really helps in an office where it's climate controlled and other people mess with the temperature. So this will get a lot of wear. I just need to finish it. And again, I'd done what I needed to do for the test knit. I had other test knits that I needed to do. So I moved on. That's the only reason. I tell a lie. <laughs> it's not the only reason. Uh, if I'm completely honest, I've never done an applied eye cord. Find off applied eye cord before and I'm a bit nervous about it I haven't knitted many eye cords full stop so partly I'm putting it off because because I'm nervous about it so that should be a relatively quick process albeit it's, it is a it's a long shawl so there's a lot of edge to put eye cord on but it should be a fairly easy finish so that's something I want to do fairly quickly we're getting into slightly more complex ones now we'll go through this one next because actually this is part of a, a make along knit along that work knits is running that lauren is running so this actually i cast on over christmas um when i had no business casting on new things but my other half got me some yarns for christmas and i wanted to cast them on because i think it was inga from knitting tradition said this we should encourage our partners buying us yarn he chose these himself he completely chosen these himself and he did a really good job so i wanted to encourage that and cast on straight away also shiny new so this is the beginnings of an everlasting loop eternal loop sorry eternal loop cowl by annie knits i think is the designer name on the pattern i don't know if you can see that there but it's got these wrapped stitches that are gonna extend and some garter bumps and things like that it's 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 curling up quite a lot because what it is, is it's a double thickness cowl. So I'll knit the big strip and then join it together at the end. I'm not completely following the pattern because there are some moss stitch sections that I'm just not that bothered about putting in. I'm gonna do more of these wrapped stitch sections, I think. And it uses four colors. So I've got three that my other half got me and one from Stash that I'm gonna combine. So he got me, the gray in this is this, which is Dye Gilpin Laland DK. This is in the shade Driftwood. I don't know if you can see, oops, I don't know if you can see there, but it's almost like a like a chained construction. Um, and it says DK, but hold that thought. I he also got me some onion knit, onion knit nettle DK. I'm not sure of the shade of this, I'll have to put this one below. A skein of Kelborn Woolen's Camper, which is there. I got it upside down, that's better. Kelvin Mullins Camper. It's the fingering weight version of their Scout yarn, which everybody, uh, I've heard a lot of people talking about. And this is a fingering weight version. This is in the shade Juniper Heather. So these two are fingering weight. This one's DK weight. However, I don't think that's quite correct. I, it is It is plumper. It is loftier. It is going to puff up more, I think, when puff up. It's going to bloom more when <laughs> blocked puff up. These two have both got 183 metres per 50 grams. I think this might be 183 and 185. This has 175 metres per 50 grams. So there's really not much in it. So it's either a very light, I think it's a very light DK that will bloom nicely. But they're working together. I think they're going to work together absolutely fine. And then I have a skein of, so this my other half didn't get me, this was in stash. I have a skein of Marina's, Marina, Marina Skewers Mend It 4 Ply in the shade Swamp, which was a one-off, uh, batch she did I think and it's not showing up ah yeah there it is it's showing up okay on camera you've got some greens some purples some browns some yellows it is just a beautiful swampy green and I think when, when combined together maybe not that grey near that there that's better they make a really nice palette that works quite well together so that is um I've I cast this on as part of Lauren's invest in yourself make along which she's running on instagram um yeah so i'm gonna work on this when i have time basically but i think this will be great for dog walking uh, like i say double thickness cowl nice and deep 
probably long enough to wrap around twice. So yeah, I think I'll get a lot of use out of this. I'm gonna keep working on this. We're down to the last three. Let's start with this one because it's fairly small. This I cast on in the summer. Uh, again, I had test knits to do, so I put it to one side, but I do really wanna finish this off. And I have to give a full disclaimer that this is, it's black and it's gonna be full of dog hair. <laughs> I'm so sorry. This is, gosh, yeah, that shows it quite well. This is the Helix Pullover by Jessie Mae Designs. Uh, this is an all over, all over lace, mesh almost pullover pattern uh, I wanted to knit this I applied to test this test knit this and wasn't successful but I knew as soon as I had yarn for it I wanted to knit it because it just yeah it just I just think that's I think it's really classy I think over the top of another vest or something it would look really really nice it's wearable for work it's wearable for casual uh, and I'm knitting this in drops baby merino in the shade black this should be a fairly quick knit Again, I just need to get it back on the needles and get it finished. If I hold it near the light, she can see there's some mesh patterns there and it stretches a lot. So this looks like it won't fit me, but actually with the stretch, it really does. So yeah, very keen to finish this. Next, we have this one. We'll talk about this one. This was a test knit. Are you sensing the theme? Um, this is another test knit where you needed to finish the yoke on one sleeve and this I need to finish because it is just stunning I'm really pleased with my yarn choices my color choices everything for this so this is the S Knits Alley sweater light she's got a a, a non-light version of this it's not heavyweight I think it's just DK weight and I'd seen it so many times and really wanted to knit it but just hadn't got around to it so when there was a test call came out for the light version you bet I signed up <laughs> in a heartbeat um and it's absolutely gorgeous. Oh my God. Just looking at it now, I just want to wear it. Like, it's so good. Let me show you those colours. There's some colour work on the sleeve. I have made a slight error on the sleeve in that you're supposed to do a couple of rounds at the end in your main colour, but I'm not too bothered about that. And yeah, I've tried this on and it fits immensely well. I'll show you the detail at the back as well. So where you do your short rows at the back, you do these little wedges basically, and they look so good. I'm just so pleased with my iron choices for this. The benefit of it being a light version of a pattern that already existed was that I could go on Ravelry and I could look at the patterns that I liked and the kind of colors that they'd used and choose one that worked for me based on that. So I did. And the ones I was drawn to were light based with sort of rich colors up top. So the main colour is Drops Flora in the shade. I think it's off-white or natural. It's it's their cream colour. And this gorgeous, gorgeous um, contrast colour is hand-dyed from Cheshire Yarns, hand-dyed. I first discovered them through Laura Penrose, who'd used some of theirs to make a, a jumper for her daughter, Penny. Um, so when I was looking for sort of rich colours and things like that, they sprang to mind. And let me show you the ball. <laughs> Look at those colours. So this is their 100% Superwash Merino in the shade, so snazzy. And it is snazzy, yeah, it is snazzy. It's beautiful. I love that the raglan has this uh, this sort of white stripe that goes down the front. It's also quite an interesting, because it's, I think it's, um, I think it's make one left and right, but it's into the sti same stitch, so it creates this sort of loop detail. And this fits immensely well. It's gorgeous, it, yeah, I just, <laughs> Oh, I want to finish it so badly. The, the 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 yarn as well, because Drops Flora is an alpa alpaca wool mix. It has such a lovely drape to it. It's got a bit of a halo to it. It's really soft. I will wear the, the life out of this. So yeah, I need to finish it. It shouldn't take that long to finish. I've done most of the colour work. I just need to do a little bit of colour work on this sleeve. I'm pretty certain the rest is just knit, stocking it in the round. So got to do it. Got to do it. Want to wear it. <laughs> and last... But by no means least is this this is my biggest frustration that i haven't finished it is also possibly the longest i think it's probably the longest standing on my needles this is the cosmo sweater by russ Net knitwear let me lift it so you can see the the detail this is the bit that it's known for so simone ryan who is russ night knit nightwear russ knitwear <laughs> had done a cosmo cardigan i'd seen it and adored it um but i didn't knit it 
for one very particular reason. So you can see this is the this is the main thing about the Cosmo sweater. It's all broken rib up the top, and then you have this detail that goes across, um, and you have stockinette for the rest of the body. And the the cardigan has that as well. But I found that I don't the, the point meets at your button band. I don't tend to wear cardigans buttoned up. I tend to wear them open. So I was going to lose some of the effect of that. So I didn't knit that. But the moment she announced the Cosmo sweater, I bought the pattern instantly. And I actually had yarn on the way from a D-stash that worked really, that I thought would work really well from it, for it. So yeah, I bought the pattern. The yarn was already on the way. I ordered some mohair to go with it. And I cast on. And it is so squishy and fluffy. So the yarn, the mohair is Drops Kid Silk in the shade Mid Grey. And the, the main yarn, which I got from a D stash, unfortunately I think is discontinued. Um, but it's this. This is this is by easyknits.co.uk and it's called Big Boy, which is personally I think a great name for a yarn. <laughs> the reason it was called that was because it came in 150 gram skeins. So the aim that was that for somebody with bigger feet something like that you could make a pair of socks from one ball of yarn without needing to buy two um and it's a it's a mix it's 70 percent exmoor blue face 20 percent alpaca and 10 percent nylon so it's got a lovely drape and hay halo and everything to it and it's gorgeous i had three skeins from a d stash in the shade shade gris which you can see is a really light grey and that with the drops mohair creates almost like this mild effect I don't know if that's going to show up it's beautiful and it's got a gorgeous halo that isn't showing at all it is a little bit it's got a gorgeous halo gorgeous drape very squishy because of the broken rib and again just can't wait to wear this this will get so much wear at work what I was gonna do was finish this ball and then start on the neckline but actually I've broken the ball by accident anyway so I think what I might do is pick up for the neckline and get that done so that I can then try it on again and see how much I need to add to the length and that is my final whip that I have on the go at the moment they're all around my feet and I'm just looking at them and it's it's mental it's too much how can one person possibly work on all these things um, so yeah, that's what I'm working on at the moment. My aim, like I said, for 2024 is to work through all of these and get them off the needles. There's nothing here. I've already done the culling. There's nothing here that I don't want to knit, that I, that I want to frog. I've already done that bit. Um, so I've got a year to finish all of these. There's plenty of time. I also, like I said, I want to cast on other things as well and I'm not going to stop myself from doing that. So we'll see. <laughs> but that's the point of this is to keep myself accountable. I would love to hear from you guys if you've watched to the end. Thank you for starters for watching to the end and I hope that this has been enjoyable. Uh, any suggestions you have for formatting, for editing, for positioning, anything. This is the first time I've ever filmed any videos for YouTube or otherwise. So I am open to any and all suggestions. I'm also open to your thoughts on my projects. Is there anything that you think I should change, I should tweak? What do you think I should work on first? What would you really like to see me finish first? Um, yeah, and... I hope to see you again. Again, thank you for spending your time with me. I hope to see you again very shortly for hopefully, like I say, the Organise My Yarn Stash um, video. In that, I'm going to talk about, like I said, I've got some sweater quantities in there and I want to talk about my plans for those because I have the patterns for most of them as well. So I'll talk about the yarn and the patterns and we will organise it all. My aim at the end of that is to have everything on Ravelry as well so that I've got project pages for the things I'm working on. I've got my stash organised in Ravelry and then if I sign up for a test knit or I want to knit a new design, I can go in Ravelry and see if I've got something that works for it. So yeah, come join me for that. That's going to be stressful and quite a vulnerable place actually because my yarn stash is, like I say, it's a mess. <laughs> it's a mess. So come join me. Um, yeah, thank you very much for watching. I hope you've had a fantastic day wherever you are. Uh, and I hope to see you again on the next one. Bye.